Bye, kids. I'll keep an eye out for my grandkid in space. You what? Oh, right, Naruto. Thanks for visiting, Space Beth. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This will be my full Rick and Morty Season 6, Episode 3 video. There were a whole bunch of Easter eggs and references, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, I'll be doing videos for all the episodes this season. Be sure to subscribe to get them. Careful for spoilers from the episode. If you haven't seen it yet, we'll just start at the beginning and work our way through scene by scene, talking about Easter eggs and WTF moments as we go along. Starting with the episode title, Bethic Twinstinct, which is a reference to the movie Basic Instinct, one of the spiciest crime thrillers of the 90s. It was a pretty spicy episode, but the actual plot of the episode has nothing to do with the actual plot of the movie. Like, they were just using the name as the parody. It's mostly a Beth episode about both of the best, Space Beth and the version at home. I'll just call her Home Beth for the purposes of this video. And the idea is that they're meant to be so like Rick, they're just as narcissistic as Rick is, of course they would be into themselves, the same way that Rick is kind of into himself. In fact, later in the episode, Rick reveals, because he's seen the infinite Ricks, like he's been to so many different realities, he's seen every possible permutation of the family, so he's been in similar situations as happened in this episode, but also he himself has forgotten the ice cream, which is a reference to him getting it on with other versions of Ricks from other realities before. Like it's Rick, so he's literally done and seen every possible thing, so he has contingency plans for everything, which is why he has the backup ice cream in his little freezer there. Which is also why he aggressively does not care what they actually do during the episode. Like, I don't care what you do, but it's gonna get really difficult if you keep lying to the family about this. So basically they use the episode to do a deep dive in Beth's personality, and it's mostly about home Beth, because Space Beth did leave, did explore her potential. But home Beth did not, so that's kind of what she does during this episode, like kind of explore what she's capable of. Which they make a reference to at the end of the episode as well when Jerry flashes back and his friend is like, dude, don't do it, she's too hardcore for you, she's gonna break you. Which she kind of does briefly at the end of the episode when he puts himself into that special shell. The way the writers talked about the Beths in the episode is they were meant to feel kind of like young versions of Rick. So Rick kind of went through a similar arc exploring his potential when he first set off to find Prime Rick, way earlier in his timeline. We've seen some of his early adventures, like we've seen him get crazy with some of the other Ricks before, but he always implies stuff like this. Like there are thousands and thousands of adventures that they'll probably never have time to actually show us on screen. There's so many of them. Maybe if Rick and Morty really does go like a hundred seasons. So the Bez get kind of like a speed run version of Rick's complete arc to where he is in present day. I don't know how many episodes they plan on having Space Beth in this season, but the way she leaves at the end of the episode makes it sound like she won't be back for a while. And if they do reference their little three-way thing that they have going on between them again in future episodes, it'll probably be more as a joke, the same way that they make a joke referencing Naruto, Morty and Summer's giant space baby. Like, remember the time that the two of you had a baby together? That's still a thing out there floating around. Maybe it'll come back someday. During the cold open, we find out it's the Thanksgiving episode. Space Beth brought Morty, like the brand new XL Poop Lickian game console. They use it for a bunch of video game parodies. Turkey Rick is meant to be a reference to the U.S. president pardoning him and Morty again for crimes that they may have committed the previous year. During the season 5 Thanksgiving episode, they revealed that Rick has been using this trick for years to pardon all of his crimes that he commits every single year. They reference Rick's lack of portals again. I don't know how long that's going to last, but eventually he'll probably fix it. Rick reveals currently he started changing his clothes using something similar to the nanites like Black Panther and Iron Man use because he doesn't have portals anymore. Previously in episode 1, they made a joke about him using portals to travel to other realities and steal clean pairs of clothes from alternate reality versions of Rick, rather than do laundry with his own clothes. Jerry's whole toast about how badly he needs Beth just to continue living is just more to highlight how much home Beth has been ignoring her own potential just because the family's been holding her down this whole time, kind of. Like she's had no time to explore herself, and that's basically what this episode is, is Space Beth coming to remind her that and they explore, literally and metaphorically, themselves. Like, they go full Loki. Even though they're clones, you could make the Loki reference, like Loki getting it on with a version of himself from another timeline. Loki would be proud of this episode. Space Beth reveals her spaceship is like a TARDIS, bigger on the inside, so it's a flying house, basically. She's got a ton of Predator weapons in there, apparently, too. When she says Rick calls it a hack, that's a reference to Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland saying that Rick is meant to feel kind of like a parody of Doctor Who, mixed with Doc Brown from Back to the Future. The Venusian wine getting them buzzed is what pushes them over the edge to go full Loki with themselves, which is why Rick hides it at the end of the episode, like he believes that this is the true reason why this happened. And if you don't speak French, the Venusian language that they start speaking is basically real-life French. The whole joke here is that Sarah Chalky, who voices Beth, can actually speak fluent French, so they just let her have fun with that in this episode. 
The song that she sings in French is the Major General's song from the Gilbert and Sullivan comic opera Pirates of Penzance, so Beth is apparently also a big theater nerd on top of everything else. That all the video game parodies are mostly meant to be jokes about the poor mechanics of games just in general, and also jokes about how lame the games would be if they were hyper-realistic. Like the Asteroids game is based on the real-life Asteroids game, but the joke being that what if it were real, you wouldn't see any asteroids, you'd be traveling through the vacuum of space for forever just to try to find something. And that's why the game has Morty record the message, because he would really starve if it were real life. The controllers that Rick later tries to reverse engineer seem like they're based on like a combination of PlayStation controllers and Super Nintendo controllers. When Summer finally catches both the Bez, she freaks out. The energy drink that she starts guzzling is called Battery Acid. It looks kind of like Monster Energy, which is also a joke about how most energy drinks aren't much better for you than actually drinking Battery Acid. But please do not drink Battery Acid. Their version of Street Fighter seems like it's closer to Street Fighter V. Kick Puncher looks like a parody of Ryu. Tube Steak looks like Blanca. But if you watch the Community series, the Kick Puncher name is a big community Easter egg. During that series, Kick Puncher was the hero of a movie franchise that Troy and Abed kept talking about. Tube Steak's pretty obvious reference. That's just a reference to your dong. Jerry completes the horse puzzle because Beth is also obsessed with horses. There's horse-themed stuff all over the house, which Rick later references, like he calls both the Bez sapphic horse girls. When they say they're going to the gloppy drop system for ice cream, that was previously referenced in the Wedding Squanchers episode, and as Rick explains, their race's ice cream is like the best ice cream in the multiverse. Space Beth reveals she has her own small space station she uses in an apartment orbiting Earth. We also find out she keeps a family photo there, meaning that she actually does miss the family, even though she seems like she doesn't during the episode. Then when Morty catches them, it almost looks like he breaks the fourth wall here, and that would be a first for him. I don't think we've ever actually seen him break the fourth wall in an episode before, but the way they cut the transition, I think they play it so that you could think it is a fourth wall break or it's not a fourth wall break. Then probably the most interesting thing here during this conversation that Beth has with Rick when she reveals what really happened is him revealing that he's literally seen and done everything, so he himself has seen what she's done before, so he's not surprised by that, but he himself has also done it with other versions of himself and other realities. So thus he has the contingency plan of the ice cream just in case the same thing happens in this reality, which it just did. When he's giving her advice, it also sounds like he doesn't like credit cards, credit in general, or just taking out loans. All about staying liquid, don't want to pay that interest. When they're on the rooftop smoking, you notice that the smoke that they blow is based on what they're currently thinking about, so Space Beth blows a middle finger flipping someone off, and Home Beth blows Jerry's face. The next video game parody is of Final Fantasy VII, his giant sword from the game, but because they're doing the whole hyper-realistic thing, the whole idea is that the sword is too big and heavy for him to actually pick it up. I'm not sure who the giant crustacean is meant to be a reference to. I think the whole thing with the infinite console screen is meant to show you that the game has access to an infinite library of games, but they're all kind of like lame games like this. The next parody being an overt reference to the affair that the Bez are having, but done in the style of like a JRPG text-based relationship game, like a dating sim. The worst dating sim you've ever seen. Then we find out that Rick has a working holodeck inside the house, and when he says they went full San Junipero, that's a reference to the Black Mirror episode of the same name where two women fall in love and live out the rest of their lives inside a Matrix-like simulation like this. Then when they reveal the truth at dinner, Jerry has the flashback, that's just meant to show you how Beth has all this potential that she's never really actually explored, and that's why this is playing out during this episode, because it's finally coming out of her, like, oh wow, I never thought about doing something like this. Is this what I'm capable of? We find out that Rick has upgraded Jerry's body with a shell defense mechanism that he uses anytime there's something that he just can't or doesn't want to deal with, and that will just continue in future episodes, like he'll have that ability going forward now. He also reveals that Jerry can turn into a full-on Shrek if they try to force the shell open, also clowning on Wonder Woman 1984 just being a lame movie. Then the text-based game might seem familiar if you play games back in the 1970s. Like, this is probably too old for most people watching this video, but some of you may have actually played the game back in the day. It's a mainframe game called Wander from 1974, like a text-based game. There are lots of clones of this, but this is based on one of the original ones from back in 1974 that basically plays out exactly the way that you see in the episode. It's just like a text-based game where it gives you little queries, you type responses, and it'll just generate things based on that. The joke about the vampire ending in the clearing is just a joke about people having to play the real version of the game back in the day with similar circumstances, like weird crazy stuff would happen, and because it's just text, you wouldn't have warning of what might happen next. 
it almost seems like Morty breaks the fourth wall again, like almost breaks the fourth wall, but not quite, when he references the fact that they're in a television show trope of kids and sitcoms that never age like The Simpsons. So like, how many times have we done this Thanksgiving before? How old are we? This is the memory device from Morty's mind blowers that they want Rick to use. He makes an Eternal Sunshine reference because in that movie, Jim Carrey's character wanted all history of his relationship and his love of Kate Winslet's character taken from his mind. The multiplicity reference is to the Michael Keaton movie where he clones himself, implying, like the joke, is that the clones got it on with themselves during that movie. And like I mentioned earlier, when he says the two of them are going to attack him later when the memory wipe fails, he's actually talking from experience because, as he said, he's seen it all, so he's been in scenarios where that's happened, where it hasn't worked and they've attacked him. Which is why he goes through this whole thing so unsurprised by every turn, like, yeah, yeah, whatever, let's get on with this. Jerry apparently reveals he has a weird little junk, like he just seems fixated on it and it just comes out during their argument here, like, wow, you seem like you've been thinking about this for a long time. And when Summer referenced getting themselves another Jerry, they actually literally just did that in episode one, or actually kind of the reverse of that, like they found that they'd had a different Jerry this whole time and went back to get the original one. The way the writers talked about the weird three-way thing they have going on at the end of the episode is that they could always reference it in future episodes, like it could potentially become a thing, but at most, I think they'll just use it for comedy, like they'll reference it in funny ways in future episodes, the same way that they make the joke about the giant Naruto baby at the end of this episode. Like, oh yeah, that thing is still out there. Remember we did that once upon a time a little while ago. And the way they play Space Beth leaving, this sounds like it's going to be the last episode we'll see her in for a while. She might come back before the end of this season, but like, I think it's going to be a little while. The lesson Rick is referencing when he says he also learned something this week is that he shouldn't leave the Venusian wine out because he blames that on everything that happened during the episode and stows it in that hidden cabinet. Also, zoom and enhance in the background here. There's this freaky little tiny Morty stuck inside the bottle of liquor, like a Morty tequila worm or something. His eyes are closed, so I'm assuming he's dead. Beneath it, there's a Meeseeks box, and next to it is a container that looks like a hairy ball sack. So you can let me know in the comments, what do you think that container is for? Like, what does he use that for? In the post credit scene, they reveal that Jerry or other Jerry's, multiple Jerry's, visit the Jerry Bury daycare, which we just saw in episode one, to get it on with themselves, sometimes in really weird ways. So like as weird as Beth got in this episode, Jerry is just as weird. But if you spotted any other Easter eggs and references in the episode that I didn't mention in the video, just write them below in the comments. In my full episode four video, we'll post next week after they release it. Big reminder that the Star Wars and or episodes are starting this week. Episodes one through three are dropping tomorrow. My video for that will post on Wednesday. So make sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. Everyone click here for my House of the Dragon episode six trailer video and click here for all my Rick and Morty episode videos. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.